Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo from Sea of Tranquility. Uh, welcome to uh, another one of our episodes that we just we hate having to do because uh, it always brings about a lot of sadness. But uh, we're here to report the death of a uh, a very cool guy from a very cool band uh, who were big supporters of what we did here on Sea of Tranquility, and uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting him and uh, seeing his band play and communicating with him over the years. Uh, Frank Wyatt. Of uh, Happy the Man, keyboard player and sax player, songwriter, founding member of Happy the Man, also of uh, Bolivian Sun, and various other projects, uh, passed away, I believe, yesterday after a long battle with uh, kidney cancer. Uh, Frank, I don't exactly know how old Frank was. It's kind of impossible to find any information out there on Frank uh, other than you know the musical stuff. But uh, just a, a tremendous guy and such a contributor and important part of Happy the Man. For those of you who don't know who Happy the Man are, um, I realize Frank is probably a little bit more obscure than some of the other folks that we talk about who uh, here on the channel who happened to pass away. But uh, Happy the Man were one of the great U.S. prog rock bands of the 70s. Uh, probably after Kansas, probably the second maybe most well-known uh, progressive rock act from the U.S., in the 70s and uh you know most prog rock bands that we talk about in the history of prog uh happen to be british or from you know from the uk or some other country not much from here right uh, but happy the man were signed to arista records back in the mid 70s they released their uh, debut album in 1977 and followed that up uh, one year later with crafty hands these were the two major label releases for the band uh they also were at, at the time also considered to be a uh, hey considered to be uh, potentially the backing band to uh, Peter Gabriel in his solo career but uh, that wound up not to be and then the band you know obviously didn't have a lot of success with these albums weren't really promoted by the label and uh, they kind of broke up and went their separate ways and we saw like all sorts of interesting releases over the years that came out in, in the wake of their breakup like uh, you know third better late right some of the stuff that they were working on uh, they, they reunited many years later um, with the muse awakens you know 2004 all new music all right kind of a revamped lineup uh, that we, we got the kind of uh, concept piece death's crown all right, another unreleased album. This was done in uh, 1974 and 1976. So there were a lot of stuff that they were working on and recording before they actually went to Arista. Uh, Happy the Man Beginnings. Okay, this uh, also recordings from 1974 and 1975. We've got a live album here as well. So, you know, a lot of stuff. But uh, anyway, you know, Frank's contributions to the band, uh, you know, along with songwriting, uh, he was the guy, uh, a lot of electric piano. You know, mainly that was those were his contributions to these albums and saxophone, and the music of Happy the Man had a very kind of light-hearted prog meets fusion meets Canterbury style that was very eclectic at times, very complex rhythmically and, and uh, compositionally, compositionally speaking, <clears throat> with the weaving uh, keyboards. You know, you had Kit Watkins on synthesizers and all sorts of other keyboards, Frank's electric piano and sax. Uh, Stanley Whitaker, also on uh, guitars and lead vocals. Uh, Rick Kennel on bass. You know Ron Riddle on on drums, uh, along with you know you had uh, who else? Uh, Mike Beck also played drums in the band, right? Coco Coco Russell played drums in the band. So they had some varying lineups and things over the years, but the kind of the classic lineup of the band from uh, this time period. You know, Stan Whitaker, Frank Wyatt, Kit Watkins, Rick Kennel, and Ron Riddle. That's that's kind of like the classic lineup of the band. But uh, very cool stuff. And like I said, he I think Frank always added that kind of jazzy touch to their music. That, uh, you know, the, the, with the electric piano tones and the sax. Uh, I think very, very in, important. Uh, also backing vocals as well. Also, I think he added some flute here and there as well. Um, on these albums too so that kind of that jazzy element that was always so prevalent in their music I think really came from Frank uh, and if you listen to any of the like Oblivion Sun or the Frank Wyatt and Friends album that came out a couple of years ago uh, that kind of Canterbury kind of quirky whimsical flair that kind of jazz fusion jazz rock uh, type of an element um, is prevalent on all those albums and I think that's what he always brought to the table so uh, yeah, super nice guy. He used to always communicate with me via email over the years. Um, and, uh, you know, 
thank us for all the stuff that we do here on SOT and covering their music and would always send me any of the new releases that he had and uh, it was a really nice meeting him at Nearfest all those years ago God, it seems like forever ago but uh, you know when they did uh, play there which was really cool which was one of their reunion shows but yeah if you haven't heard either you know Crafty Hands or the self-titled Happy the Man I definitely urge you getting that but you know there's a lot of really good stuff on all of these as well um, The Muse Awakens is lots of fun this came out on uh uh, Inside Out Music in 2004. Uh, Death's Crown is very cool as well. So all these are really worth checking out if you're interested in uh, kind of like more obscure uh, U.S. progressive rock from the 70s. Uh, I, think, I think they were a band that had some potential, uh, but, you know, in 1977, 1978, I don't think Arista Records had any idea what to do with them. And by then, Prog Rock's heyday was kind of done already. So even though they had some vocals on a couple tracks here and there, for the most part, it was uh, largely instrumental music and probably a bit more ch too challenging for popular music tastes at the time. I think Happy the Man would have come out a couple of years earlier. Might have been a different story, but they're definitely one of the greats of the uh, 70s U.S. prog scene, and uh, Frank White will be missed, a, a true gentleman. So, uh, Frank, we're thinking about you. We're missing you, too. His friends and family, uh, our condolences here at Sea of Tranquility on the passing of Frank Wyatt, who uh, passes away in 2023. So thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Take care, everybody. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.